Hey everybody, I'm so excited to be coming back for another Shadow Work Wednesday with Courtney Hansen. She's a fellow author. Her book Within came out not too long ago and it's absolutely incredible. I highly recommend you pick it up. And today we're going to be talking more about Shadow Work, which is my book that's coming out on September 20th of this year. It looks like Courtney is now in here, so we're going to get her joined in and get her live in just a moment. Please, as you guys come in, let me know where it is that you're coming from. Just drop it in the comments here. Let me know what part of the world you're in and if you have any questions about Shadow Work as a whole, as a practice, or any other questions that you want us to address today that we can bring up for each of you. So this is my book, Shadow Work. It's available right now on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. You can pick those up in the pre-order status. And what you do with that ticket is that you can use that to get into the virtual book party that I'm hosting for everyone who pre-orders the ticket. So everybody who purchases the book will be able to join in on that. I'm really excited to be able to share the magic of shadow work and I have loads of goodies that are going to be available at that party. We're going to be doing some live shadow work, some kundalini. I'm going to bring in some podcast hosts and authors who you guys know and love and you get to hear from them. I'm going to do a live Q&A so you can ask me anything about the book writing process, about shadow work, about the clients I've worked with. Nothing is off limits. You guys can ask away. And then I have a big surprise coming at the end of that that I'm super excited to bring in so that you guys can be a super exciting event. I just invited Courtney in, so we'll see if she joins in in just a moment. There she is. Hey. Hi. I'm so glad to have you here live with me. I'm so excited for today. Okay, cool. So for everybody who is new to your world, can you just introduce yourself and let them know who you are? Yes. So I am Courtney Hansen. I am the author of Within, and I also do trauma therapy. I own a holistic healing center and really focus around trauma somatics and healing. It looks like you're at the center right now. Are you there? I am. That woodworking is just so gorgeous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about shadow work and everything that it entails, because I think it's one of those things that people have heard of, but they don't necessarily know what it means. So can you tell me a little bit about your journey into shadow work for yourself? Yeah, my journey was funny with shadow work because when I first got on my spiritual path, I was really love and light and I thought that anything dark was bad and would lower my vibration. And so I, I wouldn't think bad thoughts. I would do my daily affirmations every day and I would only talk about like high vibrational things. And so <laughs> my world started to crumble on my spiritual path and I was like, what's happening? Like I'm doing all the things. And the problem was that I wasn't really living authentically because I hadn't fully integrated yet with my shadow. And I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> and so I started dipping my toes in shadow work and it was uncomfortable, like so horribly crawling out of my skin. And I realized, I was like, okay, if something is making me this uncomfortable, like obviously it's something that I need to explore. And so I started off super, super slow with shadow work because I was terrified of having to acknowledge that I had these pieces of myself because I was the type of person that I would like close that chapter and never look at it again. And it was easier that way, right? So I wouldn't let my family talk about my past. I would like that person didn't exist anymore. I was this new person. Yeah. And what I didn't get was that's why like imposter syndrome kept popping up and all these things kept happening and I kept getting anxiety attacks because I wasn't fully embodied within myself and I was just shutting the door on a huge aspect of myself. So shadow work changed my life in the way that I really got to know myself on a deeper level. And it also helped me to help other people because with shadow work, you're able to use your story for power versus using your story for shame. Right. And it's such an important distinction. I think all of us, when we first get into spirituality, fall into that same world that you're talking about where it's like supposed to be love and light and positivity and all the good vibes only and your vibe <laughs> matters most. And it took me a while to find myself in that same point too, where it was like, this is bullshit. Like, it's not working. It doesn't feel right in my body. It doesn't feel right to be this anxious all the time as we're trying to press things down and hide them from ourselves. It doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And those of us with a lot of trauma, we're just trying that much harder to keep this stuff repressed and buried down. 
it's like a mountain of stuff that's like creeping its way up and we're trying to force it down, trying to force it down. And usually it comes and slaps us in the face at some point. Like there's only <laughs> so much repressing we can do, right? <laughs> right. Uh, when I was personally in trauma therapy, I had her explain to me, she was like, you have everything in this like lock box and there's all these padlocks on it. I was like, yeah, it's good there. Like, let's just keep it there. But when it was unlocked and all the things were released, it was like embodying your shadow self is the most magical thing that you can possibly do. And it's so hard to explain. You've done it beautifully in your book, but it's, it's so difficult to explain to people the freedom because I never, I hate to say that we're ever healed because I feel like then we're dead. Right. But like the freedom that you experience and tapping into that true joy, like there was a huge chunk of my life that I don't think I ever experienced real joy because I had suppressed so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It almost dulls the other senses. It's mm -hmm. like an act when you're trying to hide that much from yourself. I know I felt that for myself too. Yeah. And when I was writing the book, something that was really important to me was being able to explain the impact it would have because shadow work sounds scary. It sounds really <laughs> ominous, doesn't it? It does. I did a podcast like an hour and a half ago now. And when I started, this is somebody who's like a friend of a friend of a friend. I was kind of doing a favor. And she started with going, I don't know what shadow work is, but I literally envision like people in black masks, like around a fire. It's like, that is not even <laughs> close to what it is. <laughs> it's not even close, but we do get that image when we hear shadow of something mm -hmm. scary like lurking around the corner but the joy and the freedom that come from doing shadow work are life-changing yeah absolutely and you know it's almost as like when you're embodying when you take it to the divine feminine energy it's the same thing i see a lot of is people embodying that dark feminine which has been suppressed for so long and I'm telling you situations now that happen like big situations like my recent situation like I'm able to walk through that so much more authentically and so much more gracefully than what I could have just two years ago because of shadow work because I know like that fear just isn't there anymore like we're friends. Yeah, absolutely. It will never be fully healed. Just like you said, there's no such thing as that. But what shadow work really does is it removes a lot of that fear. It takes mm -hmm. the edge off of things. So when we experience things that would have triggered us in the past, now something that would have been a level 10 is like a two. So you see it and you go, oh, like I feel that. It sucks. But it's not going to weigh me down. It's not mm -hmm. going to bring me hurtling down into the depths the way that it would have before. And we can move through it a lot faster. I wish I had that before I went through cancer. But at the same time, if I didn't go through that the way that I did, I probably wouldn't be here. So grateful for the journey, but shadow work is life changing on that front. Yeah, absolutely. I know it was funny. I, I whipped out actually your first book and I was like, maybe we'll just go through some of these again while we're going through this little experience here. Just kind of refresh some things. Oh, good. Okay. So for anybody who's not sure what she's talking about. I have a shadow work journal that you can pick on on Amazon. I'm going to pull that out now. It's called the shadow seekers journal. And this is full of shadow work prompts to just help you understand a little bit more about yourself. I think about it as tapping into the subconscious mind and then true shadow works going down into that unconscious into the depths. But I think once you've done the bulk of your true shadow work and gone into those depths, then having that subconscious support can be enough to kind of tweak you back in the right direction and move you through things because you already did the big stuff. Now it's just handling the day-to-day -day things, even if they are bigger. Yeah, there's always maintenance. There's always maintenance. <laughs> and I love those people, like especially coaches. I have such a love-hate relationship with the coaching industry. And it's hard because there's so much beautiful stuff that happens there. And then there's also really exploitative things. Uh, the journal is called the Shadow Seekers Journal for the person who just asked that. It looks like this if you search it on Amazon. It's amazing. Thank you. With the work that we see in the coaching world, there is this, I don't know what I want to call it, like a mask almost, where people are like, if you just do this, you'll be healed. Or if you just do this, you'll make a million dollars. If you just do this, I have the secret formula and you don't have it. And one of the things I've always respected and admired about you is you never say that. It's always... Yeah 
journey. It's always about embracing the journey and really understanding that every day is going to be a little bit different. And we go through hard things and it's normal and it's okay. And we don't necessarily have a finish line. It's about the trip that takes mm -hmm. us wherever it is that we're going. That's what matters. Absolutely. And it's, it's so funny you bring that up because when I first started really stepping into my full self, it was like, I had this huge fear, right? I still had all these layers of fear that I hadn't walked through yet. And one of the big fears was that I wouldn't, I wouldn't get clients. I wouldn't be able to support myself doing a spiritual business. I wouldn't be able to help people and still have abundance. And it was like this huge block that me and myself were battling, right? And shadow work was actually one of the ways going unconscious, not subconscious, but going a little bit deeper was one of the ways that I was able to remove that. And it was so hard because when I personally had to cut off relationships with my parents a couple of years ago, um, I had this, all these limiting beliefs and these thoughts still that would continue to pop up for me. And I was like, what is going on? Like, I'm supposed to be healed and fixed, right? <laughs> I did <laughs> the work. I did everything. And I, I just kept hitting this wall. And what I realized was all I needed to do was storytell and just be completely transparent and be who I needed myself to be. And when I started doing that and just showing up, no matter what I looked like, no matter, and it was hard because I came from that influencer background. So it was like, everything was fake as shit. Like, right. I had the perfect life. I had the perfect husband. I had the perfect kids. I, everything was great. And so coming out of that and coming into like real and raw and completely shifting my brand like that was, it was hard because there was already, it was so public that it all happened. And so when I was able to truly step into authenticity with that, and like I said, begin just sharing my story, everything just fell into place. Like when I was able to fully release that fear and the only way I was able to fully release that fear was through shadow work. But when I was able to release that fear, like everything kind of just blew up for me. And I was like, whoa, what's happening? And I was like, okay, don't question it. Like everything's in flow. Like we're just going to be, <laughs> but it's amazing because now it's like, the tools that I have given myself through shadow work are the greatest gift. And then your book puts it in such a way that it's accessible to absolutely anyone. Like you don't have to work with a coach. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars. You don't have to go through the gatekeeping and gurus. It's right there. Yeah, that was something that was so important for me and still to this day is so important is that we don't need anybody else to heal. All you need is yourself. And if you know how to, if you have the tools placed right in front of you, you can do whatever you want. You're limitless. Mm -hmm. And I do think that it's a terrible business model because if I'm not wrenching you in and getting my hooks in you and pulling you further in, it's like that fear that other people might experience would step in, but not for me because of shadow work. Because I'm not afraid that I know that if I give people these gifts and I share this information with them and I let them know how to heal, there's going to be that beautiful ripple effect. The world's going to be better, less anxiety, less depression, less mental illness, less people who have cancer like I had. So shadow work for me is like a love letter to everyone to everyone who's ever been interested in learning more about themselves and figuring out what to do to better their life and their own journey. So oh, I'm so grateful for it. And I'm glad that you got a chance to read it. For you guys who don't know me, Shadow Work releases on September 20th of this year. And everybody who pre-orders it gets a free ticket to my virtual book release party. Where we're going to be doing some live shadow work and some Kundalini yoga, which I also love and totally feel like is an energy shift and really just mm. accelerates some of the work that we do with shadow work. So it's going to be a fun night. Oh my gosh. So fun. Yeah. So during my um, uh, weekend of bed rest, right. I haven't had that much downtime in a very long time, um, yeah. <laughs> but I got to, I started reading this book that I, I read a few years ago, but it hit different this time. And it was the Kundalini Tantra book um, oh, okay. from, um, Oh, I can't think of who wrote it, but it's like the, the big one. Right. And I, so I went in and I was reading it and it's so interesting reading it now versus when I first read it and how the words just resonate so much deeper. And like after having a Kundalini awakening and after experiencing that fire and the energy and how intense it is, it's, it's amazing when paired with shadow work. And I remember our first podcast we did a few years ago. I just started doing Kundalini and I was so frustrated because I was like, all these people are having these awakenings and I can't have one. And I was like, just so forceful. 
-hmm. And then I was reading in there and one of the parts that stood out to me was it was like, it can take, you know, a a normal one, like at least a year to 12 years. And I'm like, 12 years, my God. But it makes perfect sense now in my head. And so it's interesting to see when you reread something, the, the weight it holds. And I'm sure that your book holds that same power is that when you read it the first time, you get a lot. But when you don't know what shadow work is, it's kind of like just so much, right? Mm -hmm. And so being able to go back and review, because it is such a lifelong devotion. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited about the virtual book release party, because if people come and they get to experience shadow work firsthand, and they get to go through what a shadow work meditation looks like and how it feels in your body and exactly how to get yourself there, then when you read the book, it's going to be like, yeah, I've done that. I know how that feels. I've been there. And For anybody who wants to join that, don't worry if you can't make it live. We're going to have a recording for everybody who has a ticket. And getting a ticket is as simple as pre-ordering my new book, Shadow Work. So yeah, I felt that with other books too. I felt that with The Body Keeps the Score, Mm -hmm. where I had to read that when I was going through my graduate school training, which was amazing because not a lot of mental health programs really focus on the body. And that was about the extent of what we did, but I was grateful for the little bits that I got. When I read it then, it was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. I understand for sure. And then reading it now, having lived through so much trauma, knowing what it feels like in my body, doing all the shadow work to release those things and reading it again, it's more of an aha moment this time around than it was the first time. But I do feel like Kundalini is interesting for a lot of people. I used to be a coach in a really prominent Kundalini business program. The person who ran it is a friend of mine. She's been my friend since we were in like middle school. She's amazing. And she would take people through Kundalini to help them understand how to move their energy, how to move their aura out so they could be more magnetic in the hopes that whatever their business was, it would draw in more clients and draw in more people. And something that would happen for a lot of them, the reason why she brought me in as a coach, is that their shadow would start to pop up on them where they would hit blocks and they would hit them a lot faster. Because with Kundalini, when you're trying to push your aura out, your shadow is like a weight that's holding it down. So you push it out and it will get dragged down. You'll push it out, it'll get dragged right back down. So, so many of the women would get so frustrated experiencing that and going, why is it that this isn't taking off the way it's supposed to? Why am I not having this explosive energy shift that everybody else is having? And it was shadow. So we would do shadow work together. And when we did, it was immediate. They'd have their Kundalini awakening. They'd have these moments where it was like they could feel their aura expanding out. They'd have clients rushing to work with them because our energy is everything. But our shadow is like a weight. It holds us in place. And the same can be said for manifestation. Mm. I have another friend, Laura Chung, who has a book. I actually have this up here too. It's called How to Manifest. It's kind You're of- so prepared today. I'm so prepared (laughs) and how to manifest here and how to manifest. She actually talks about shadow work in the book because you cannot manifest without shadow work Mm. in manifestation. We talk about the quantum realm, which is just this physical structure, this energy that exists around us that states that there's nothing that we can't do. We can attach to any future timeline whatsoever because we are just consciousness in Mm. matter. And that's all that we are. So we can shift our consciousness. And when we do that, we can shift our matter. But if your consciousness is weighed down, your matter cannot shift. Mm -hmm. So if you're stuck in unconscious trauma, you can try to have a life that's more aligned, but you will get weighed down. You'll get pulled back to what it is that you're doing right now, because that homeostasis, that place that you're currently existing in, that's where your body's comfy. Until you force it out of that, which you've done so beautifully with shadow work. I've watched your journey for the past couple of years now, and I've read your book, which is incredible. Within is such a powerful masterpiece. And I love okay. that you use all the writing prompts and the things that you needed for yourself. And you put them right in there and made them accessible for people. You're a living testament to how much it can shift when someone's willing to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. It's different. You know, it's funny. I was just talking to a client yesterday and they were asking, they were, they were like, well, how do I know when I'm done? How do I know when I'm killed? And I was like, I, I feel like everyone asked this question, right? Like everyone just wants to finish line. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't know. I was like, I think the thing that we're all searching for 
is to wake up and not want to go back to bed, right? Like we want to wake up and be excited. We want to wake up and be free. And I think when we can feel free in our bodies and know that we are not in that area of just feeling yucky, I'm eating my hair, um, <laughs> that we are being that feeling, I'm like, what is in my mouth? Um, of just feeling yucky all the time that we're able to approach life so much more different and approach people different and understand people differently. Like, I mean, I don't know about you, but I used to be the most defensive person on the planet. Like someone would look at me some weird and I would be, I would want to go crawl under my covers. Right. Mm -hmm. I was super passive. I came from an abusive background. It was really difficult for me to just have day-to-day -day interactions with people because of my responses. I was a complete doormat. And it's interesting now when I run into people from my past because I'm not the same person by any way, shape, or form. And I, I, a lot of people can't, don't know how to like react to me or handle. And so it's very interesting to see the dynamic as we move through our journey on how our, how our body, and it, you know, I don't know about you, but I physically, like, I feel like my face has restructured, like things in my body have changed physically as well as spiritually, emotionally, right? It's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. You start to look different when you do these mm -hmm. things because of epigenetics. It's mm -hmm. our DNA. As we activate or deactivate certain genetic coding, we look different. This is why you can have identical twins who can tell the difference between the two of them because one of them maybe had an extra traumatic event or one of them is really working on meditation and healing themselves and you see the physical difference. It's very clear. So that can happen for all of us. We can reverse the signs of aging. We can feel better in our bodies. We can reverse illnesses. Joe Dispenza has so much research on this front and mm -hmm. amazing what we can do that we think we can't. Absolutely. I know our bodies are, we are pure magic. We're walking magic. Yeah. I, I joke sometimes with my shadow work students and say like our bodies are meat suits. This <laughs> is just like dropped into whatever body it needs to be in. But mm -hmm. then to uh, abuse this meat suit that we're stuck in. In fact, we should be caring for it because it's the body that we have for this journey. And it's the vehicle that's going to take us wherever we need to go. So we need to find that gratitude and that respect for it to yeah. help ourselves heal. Feel good. I'm laughing. I have to tell you the funniest story that you'll appreciate. So <laughs> you said me too. And I was like, Oh my gosh. When, um, when I, so I had surgery last week and when I had surgery, I was under anesthesia. And when I was coming out of anesthesia, it was the weirdest thing. Um, cause this is my first, you know, illness through really my path and everything. Well, I had, I, I guess my spirit didn't really want to be in my body through this whole experience. So we evacuated and I was standing, it was so clear. I was standing over my body and I could see myself on the bed and I was in a little like fetal position, right? I was coming out of anesthesia and for some reason I thought, no, granted, I, I know anesthesia does crazy things to us, but I thought I was the doctor and my body was the patient. And so I was like, oh, we're going to be okay. Everything's going to be good. And I was like talking to myself, but talking out loud so everyone could hear me, right? Um, but talking myself through everything. And I was like, I'll come back whenever it's safe to come back in. Uh -huh. And so then I came to, but it was weird because it was like this weird transition of feeling myself coming back into my body and like acknowledging that I was ready. And I had said all this out loud to so the doctors looking at me. He's like, are you okay? And he's like, are you one of those? And I was like, one of those. And he's like, one of those spiritual people. And he's like, cause I think you just did something astrally. And I was <laughs> I was just dying. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm one of those. <laughs> one of those. I wonder how often they see stuff like that. It was a trip. Oh, yeah. I mean, the doctors have to have experiences like that where it's like you can tell when somebody's out of body. It becomes very easy to see. I used to see it even with therapy when we would mm -hmm. talk about traumatic events where someone dissociated. I could see it. it was like their soul leaves their body, like the light behind their eyes is gone for a moment and then they get pulled back in and it's fascinating to watch and that was before I even had my own spiritual awakenings and really understood and started to see spirit and see energy again like I used to when I was a kid mm -hmm. it's wild it is insane mm -hmm. how's the healing been knowing that you have all the tools and all the resources and all the things to better serve yourself you know, I got to say, it's been actually really good. So I was only down for, I had surgery on Thursday night and Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
I really just took time off, turned the phone off. I just was, I reached out to people, uh, you being one of those people, and really just kind of connected with my tribe and then just had a lot of time to truly go within. <laughs> I came full circle. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I really, I haven't had that stillness in a very long time. And it was a lot to process because with the doctors, I mean, I got told so many different things in such a short amount of time. It was so hard for me to wrap my brain around what was happening. And it's hard because we, I mean, it's me, my husband and my kids. So everyone is so close knit. Everyone is so in each other's business. So it's not like I could keep things from my kids. So they were terrified. Yeah. Um, and pathology came back and was like, uh, so we didn't find any pregnancy placenta, which means what we removed was a mass. And which means that, and I was like, well, okay, you removed a mass, great. And they're like, well, a tumor. Like, and so HCG apparently can grow in your body and you not be pregnant and it's growing a baby tumor. Um, so trauma jokes, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot to, kind of process. And then I was doing a ton of research and I was like, you know what? I, I went into this like little pity party for like an hour and then I pulled out and I was like, you know what? No, fuck this. Like I know how to heal. Like I, this is what I do. Like I know how to do this. I just need to do it to my own body. And when I consciously shifted to, I'm not sick, I'm not going to agree with this. Everything changed. Like I went back to work a couple days ago. I was like, I'm done laying in bed. I'm done pouting. Like I'm going to alkalize my diet. Cancer can't live in an alkalized body. Right. And I was like, I, I do this for a living. I can do it for myself. And so when I was able to really um, shift to more, just have that space to have that mindset shift, everything changed. And then I got a call today and they're like, oh, pathology came back and apparently everything's been removed. So we're going to send you to a fertility specialist and make sure everything's good, but oh, you should be good to go. <sighs> and so I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's amazing news and like something that came out of a really scary process first. So I'm so glad yeah. you got that today. Yeah. Thank you for going through what you did because... For anybody who's never experienced the scare of like there could potentially be cancer in your body, you've never experienced fear like those wards and until you go through that. It, it's definitely the scariest thing I ever went through for sure. It's like I have children. Right now. It's like <laughs> nothing I've ever experienced having to, I can't imagine you, I know your journey was a lot more intense, but it from being fine to being in immense pain and being rushed to the hospital by ambulance and then like your whole life changing in like an hour being told I've never been told in my life like and I, I've put myself in some pretty dangerous situations when I was younger <laughs> but never in my life have I been told you have this surgery or you die those are your options because I was like I don't want surgery and they're like okay well you have three kids to kind of look out for here yeah. And so when you hear those words and then when you come out and you get so much information all at once, it's like our bodies just need that time. And normally past me before shadow work would have just kept busy. I would have just, you know, it doesn't exist. It's not happening. And I would have just kept going, going, going until I crashed and burned. And now I'm able to tap into that nurturing feminine energy and really realize like, oh no, I need to like, love myself through this and I need to really, really, really take time and hit the brakes and everything else can wait. And if it goes away, it goes away. But yeah, until you know, you don't really know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, fear. And I think, you know, like we were talking about, I think for, for me, I think that was a huge realization because I, <laughs> people are like, how are you grateful? And I'm like, I'm so grateful that this happened because if this wouldn't have happened the way that it went down, I would have had no idea something was even wrong until it could have gotten so much worse in my body. Yep. It could have been so much worse. The timing, <laughs> even though it was such a rush and everything was so intense, it's perfect that it happened when it did. And now it's just another thing for you to use to showcase exactly how you can practice what you preach, which I think a lot of people have difficulty with. It yeah. really is not just about knowing, it's about embodying. And that yeah. makes a difference. Absolutely. Oh, well, for everybody who's joining us here and who wants to learn more about these things, um, share a little bit about you and how they can find you. Uh, my name is Courtney Hansen. All of my stuff is under The Sweetest Little Life. So Instagram, website, all the things. And my book is called Within. It's available wherever books are sold. Yep. Perfect. And thank you again, Courtney, for coming on. Yeah. I love thank you. talking to you. You're just such a light. And thank you. <laughs> 
of course, my book is Shadow Work. It comes out officially on September 20th. And you can pick it up right now on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. And everybody who pre-orders a copy gets to come to my virtual book release party, which is going to be an expansive night where we're going to be doing some shadow work, some Kundalini, some Q&A where you can ask me anything about any topic related to shadow work, spirituality, about the book writing process, whatever you feel called to find out more about, or even about my cancer journey and healing from that. Plus, I have some special guest hosts who are going to be coming on and having conversations with us too. Everybody will get to find out who those are live, but trust me, they're good. And then um, that's it. I'm really excited to be able to bring this into the world. And thank you everyone for joining for Shadow Work Wednesday. So we'll be back next week with another guest. Courtney, thank you again. Thank you, Danielle. Bye, everybody. Thank you.